Hello, I'm Toycat and welcome back to my second channel, Geography Video. Today I wanted to talk about what I think is the weirdest and most bizarre country that exists in Europe and perhaps in the world because it's a place that makes the region of the earth that it exists on look positively normal and functional by comparison. And we're talking about Eastern and Southeastern Europe, you know, places with the highest density of countries and disputes between those countries. Uh, when you compare that to, uh, you know, the place we're talking about today, it's going to be like, oh yeah, well they look really great because what I'm talking about today is a country that you can't find on Google Maps. That's right, it's a country that won't exist on Google Maps and that isn't recognized by Google or in fact by any international body or even by the UN or any international trade body because it's a place that most of the world legally has to consider a part of Moldova. Because even though it has a lot of the things which a layperson might consider to be a country, it has territory over which enforces its own laws and customs and beliefs over, it has its own political elections, it has even, if we uh, you know dive into it a little bit further, it has its own national anthem and its own flag. It's a bit of an outdated flag, but I mean the national anthem, I can get down with the Transnistrian national anthem, so it's a weird place that isn't really officially a country, yet at the same time as not really being a country, has this weird thing where they really, 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 really want the world to recognize them as one. And sadly, although their diplomacy to do so hasn't been great, and that's why they are a unrecognized country, unrecognized by anyone else that is also recognized as a country, um, even though that is a thing, they tried their hardest to be recognized as one, and that's how it came up today, because it's a place that honestly I do forget about a lot mostly because it doesn't show up on maps, um, but every single time that I'm researching something else, every now and then I'll just find something weird that links into it. In this case, I was researching currency for a video and the Transnistrian ruble came up and it's like, yeah, I guess obviously as a country, they consider themselves one. Of course, this is gonna come up at some point, but when you dive into these sorts of things, the fact that there's no official currency code, the fact that there's no official way to trade this currency and they have to print it in another country and admit it as a token, in case you're curious, by the way, these are real things, um, because they're such a small country, they don't have their own mint, so they had to ask the mint of Poland to make them, but the mint of Poland uh, got into some troubles because obviously uh, it was viewed as a recognition of Transnistria, so they had to say that they were tokens instead, but then the Ukrainian customs uh, confiscated them because it was a legal currency. Basically, there's this really weird situation where Transnistria isn't considered a country and legally can't be dealt with as such, but the people there believe it to be one, and the people, uh, you know, and, and most people would even admit like, well, it's kind of self-controlled in this weird own way, and it leads to a lot of situations that you can just imagine, but let's talk about them in today's video. Let's guide you through Transnistria, one of the weirdest countries on the map. So yeah, with that said, let's kind of start by mentioning that the biggest city in Transnistria is Tiraspol. This is a city that is fairly small for a capital city. It's always, uh, you know, weird to look into a capital and be like, wait, this is kind of it. Because again, this is quite a small country, about half a million people. And although about a quarter of those people live in the capital alone, you can see how like immediately when you look at this, it's like, oh yeah, it's very clear what's going on with the capital. I mean, you can immediately see like, what was that? Lenin Street Hostel just over there. Um, you know, it's like, okay, so as well as having a few weird things like that, you can see like, oh yeah, here's the monument to, uh, you know, like one of the famous figures of the place. Let's see what's going on with that. And then immediately you head over to the monument and it's like, oh yeah, this looks pretty Russian as opposed to Moldovan or Romanian, as you might expect. And you can even see like, <laughs> <laughs> There's a tank here, for instance. You know what? This is a good monument to serve off. I mean, how better to pay our respects than to have a giant tank on a... <laughs> on, look how many layers of, like, thing this is. But, like, yeah, there's a tank. There's even, just over here, there's a Russian flag. This is an area of uh, Moldova, which itself is arguably an area of Romania. I mean, it's, like, a, a, a broken away country of uh, Romania. Uh, Moldova is a part of Romania that was separated, and although they joined during the interwar period, they've been separate ever since because Moldova became a part of the USSR, whereas Romania was allowed to be independent, and now they've kind of stayed separate ever since. Um, this is an area of Moldova, which doesn't like that whole thing and wants to remain a part of Russia, or at the very least, uh, the, the these days, there's more of an independence movement, but the independence movement is very much a Russian starting one, and it's weird because this is a place with a weird ethnic mix of people that are really tied together by their geographic location more than anything else. And the geographic location, in case you're curious, is that of the Dnist River. The reason it's called Transnistria, the reason uh, that's in their title, is because most of it is considered to be to the east over there. Anyway, let's talk about the second biggest city because I find that amusing too. This is Bender, the second biggest city in uh, <laughs> Transnistria, and one, I mean, it's called Bender, like weird name for a place. Two, you can see how like, oh yeah, Monument to Russian Glory is literally one of the big things here. You know, should we, should we check out the Monument to Russian Glory? You better believe I want to. So this right here is the Monument to Russian Glory. It's the, the bird. Is that? It looks like a goose, right? I know it's not, but it looks like one. This is the Monument to Russian Glory. 
and it's it's pretty nice. There's also, I, I, I found this kind of nice, you know, because this is the second biggest city. There's also, if you're willing to look for it, a nice little castle. This is the Bendery Fortress. And again, it just goes to show this is a country with a lot of the historic landmarks, a lot of the culture, the, the, its own individual things you might count as a country when you combine that with the flag, etc. So it's like, okay, so they really want to believe they're a country. The rest of Europe has no reason to admit them as one because they didn't follow the rules on how to become a country. And therefore, it's like, okay, are they a country or not? Clearly, internationally speaking, we would say no. But because they want to believe, because they want to convince the world that they are one, you get this very interesting thing where like, oh yeah, they have their own currency. Like I mentioned, they have to print it, but like legally say it's not money until it gets in the country. Then it legally becomes money and it's not really recognized as money. It doesn't have its own currency code, so you can't trade outside the country because whatever. It, the code it wants to use would otherwise be reserved for Puerto Rico. Weird thing overall, right? But it gets even weirder because they also make their own passports. And besides the passports being weird, because look at this design, by the way. I mean, it literally, it's got a hammer and sickle on again. Like, uh, you can really see the obsession with the former Russia going on right here. But as well as that being kind of weird, let's look at the Transnistrian passport, because passports are, of course, used for international travel. I mean, don't know if you guys know that one, but because Transnistria is not recognized by any other country that is recognized as a country, it means that these passports can't actually be used in the majority of nations in the world, with the exceptions of, again, free nations that aren't considered nations themselves, which are unrecognized, and therefore a Transnistrian uh, passport is not uh, valid for travels to most countries. This includes, by the way, the two countries which border uh, Mo uh, Transnistria, Moldova, which very much won't take them, and of course Ukraine, but even if you could get past Moldova, it's like, oh yeah, Romania is not going to take your Transnistrian passport, and as a result of that, the only places in the world you can use your passport, because it can't actually be used for international travel by itself, but even if you wanted to use this, you had it alongside another passport, or you're willing to break lots of laws just to get somewhere where you can legally use this, here's the funny thing, the only places you can actually use it are these three countries. Here is every single country in the world that recognizes uh, Transnistria, and as you can see, they're all three unrecognized countries themselves. So three unrecognized countries recognize Transnistria, and that is all they have in the world. At least South Ossetia and Abkhazia, the two countries that are at least on Google Maps as like gray lined, at least they have some recognition from Russia and friends because Russia wants to destabilize Georgia for reasons. But Russia has no real interest in destabilizing Moldova um, and no real interest in uh, you know, recognizing uh, Transnistria, at least not just yet. So as a result of that, even though there's this heavily Russian-speaking area that has strong links to uh, Russia itself, it is not recognized by even Russia. And as a result, they have passports and currencies that aren't recognized anywhere else in the world. And that's kind of weird by itself, I'd say. But think about the other issues of like, okay, so because this area is Transnistria and it does border Ukraine a little bit, like I uh, kind of alluded to earlier. So what's the deal with the Transnistrian Ukrainian border? And the answer is some weird stuff is going on there because Ukraine themselves can't actually do anything about that border. If you uh, read into it, Ukraine has to make the border on their side if they want to help things because uh, basically Moldova has no control of the border uh, which it shares with Transnistria because Transnistria sets up the checkpoints and Ukraine can't do anything about it because it's on Moldovan territory or Transnistrian territory as the checkpoints would say themselves. And uh, yeah, as a way to help that, um, the border has been set up on Ukrainian territory, which means that to actually have a border to their own country, they've set it up inside of another country and that way to enter Transnistria, you have to go through Moldovan. <laughs> you leave Ukraine, you go into Moldova and then according to Transnistria, you enter their country. It's like a triple border Border check, which is weird enough by themselves and kind of goes through the whole point I'm mentioning of like, yeah, this is a weird thing. If, if you don't have control of an area, but you claim you have control of the area, you have to go through some very weird things to make it happen. And, um, what I find quite interesting is the kind of uh, repeated statement that like they they want to reintegrate the country. They think it will be done in the next few years. They you know even though there's a big pushback in Transnistria, and it's been going on for 24 year, uh, 29 years now, 30 years now. It's been going on ever since the breakup of the USSR. Um, there's always that kind of push and shove where like neither side can use military uh, strength because they're was an endless source of wars, but as a result, they really want to push the country together because it would be, uh, you know, from Moldova's perspective, with a, with a breakaway republic, it's just a weakened international presence. From Transnistria's perspective, they just want their independence to be recognized. They already kind of have it, except they don't really kind of have it because when uh, actual laws that are recognized by the rest of the world are enforced, it causes serious issue because Ukraine imposed a customs regulation to the only non-Moldovan border with um, Transnistria, which meant that to anything to go through Ukraine, to get to Moldova, to get to Moldova or Transnistria or 
Moldova, as uh, it would be called there, um, has to be, uh, you know, implement, uh, has to have uh, documents processed by Moldovan custom offices. This means that to actually do business with another country from inside Transnistria, you have to recognize that you are in Moldova and deal with the Moldovan border. And as a result of this, I mean, a lot of people didn't, and there's been losses of hundreds of millions of dollars because everything that needs to go through there has to be registered officially. And this is a key thing in like, I guess, becoming a solidified country again, because it kind of proves that big point of like, even though there were big actual conflicts when the country was founded, if you look into it, there was a big on Transnistria and war and we can dive into that if you'd like to like oh yeah lots of people fought and you know oh no people died it's terrible wars was a bad thing we shouldn't do it so even though the war didn't lead to anything it just led to deaths and led to kind of a stalemate because people didn't want people to die um what's actually causing the real issues for the countries what's actually now starting to get things going is actually the uh you know the customs regulations between the country the the immigration actually using you know like i guess economic levers as opposed to military levers is the way the 21st century kind of works effectively because because um, if we go back to um, Transnistria, the only real hope they actually have is that one day they might be able to join the Eurasian Union. Well, they really want to be recognized by the you know, Russian Federation, or in this case, they actually joined... <laughs> <laughs> After the annexation of Crimea, they asked to join the Russian Federation. This is their only hope as a country, to join some economic bloc and to have some economic union. And that is a really weird thing to say. That like, oh yeah, even the country themselves, even in the day of nationalism, where nationalism can dictate where you lead a lot of things, um, unless you have some form of plan for the economics, that's where people are going to start leaving you. By the way, this is called 25th of October Street. And you can just see looking at it like, oh man, this is a... This is a very Russian looking place because they use uh, Russian as the primary communication language. And obviously even the uh, Moldovan alphabet is in Cyrillic anyway. But it's like, yeah, this is a weird part of the world that looks like one of the few places where the USSR is still strong and alive today. They've got a map of their country in that wall over there. That's nice, that's pretty considerate. Um, if we actually go over here, there's a place called Russia on the, oh, this is, this is a nice building, you know? Say what you want about Transnistria, but they've got a cool little building, which, by the way, has the Russian flag colors outside of it, as well as their own. Um, and what is that? that what is that bust off? But you get the point. They're like, um, Transnistria is a country that has to try very hard to recognize itself as a country. But the overwhelming fact, the thing that I think will one day settle this issue, probably not in the way that Transnistria would like, is that to exist as a country, you need to have something something economics and without a official currency that becomes tricky without an actual way to get things into your own border and control your own border policy um it does seem as though that is a thing that is going to be trickier for them and um just in case you're curious by the way because this video is kind of just like oh yeah i accidentally found out about transnistria again and just couldn't stop diving into it that's that's what this whole thing is it's just like i went down a wiki hole would you like me to share some other things with you because i was just like i found some interesting stuff so these are the only countries that recognize transnistria every other country has a big uh, things saying that like, hey, we don't recognize them really. Even Liechtenstein, you know, like, come on, guys, they're, they're an easy one to get on your side. They're like, oh, I don't really agree with that one. I think uh shouldn't recognize them as a country. Moldova, of course, has a lot to say. But it's really interesting to see that like, okay, so they're not recognized. But what they have done is they've made something called the Community for Democracy and Rights of Nations. There are four separate countries. You know the four. You want me to say them again? <laughs> <laughs> the four countries that will recognize each other. But um, yeah, this is uh, four separate countries or countries that have all agreed to uh, share their, um, <laughs> all agreed to have this uh, kind of, uh, you know, common bond of each other to share their, uh, you know, they, they want to share democracy and uh, rights of nations of the world. And although that's kind of questionable given the nations of in it, uh, they do all have visa free access to each other's countries. So that's nice. If you can get from one of these places to the other, which spoiler alert, you actually cannot because i mean that's not how the world works oh actually right now i wonder tourist pool airport does it have its own airport how do people fly in and out of that i just see okay you know actually you're gonna which when is me going down the uh, rabbit hole right now oh it's just an airbase so there's no so there's no official international yeah th there's no passenger service on commercial airlines so even in a country a place of 500,000 people with a city as big as tourist pool by the way um, which again has 133,000 people there. There's no functioning airport because do you know what you need to have an airport? You need to have international agreements of other countries as well as international aviation bodies like IATA, for instance, which refuses to give them, uh, you know, codes, it seems. Um, but yeah, so basically, 
the other things I wanted to show off in today's video is um, the fact that like, oh yeah, if we go back to, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> international recognition of it, it's like, oh yeah, kind of sad. But if you look at these countries, the one the one thing they all kind of agree is that like, oh yeah, maybe one day we could join the Eurasian Union because the one thing all four of these countries have in common is they were put together, they, they found their independence as a result of the dissolution of the USSR because if the USSR is falling apart, then why shouldn't we? Except uh, the funny thing is like Transnistria is kind of the, exception to that rule because Transnistria only exists because Moldova was trying to get independence and this man, Igor Smolov, uh, Smirnov, in fact, uh, Igor Smirnov uh, actually disagreed with that heavily. He saw that this language, uh, like he saw that there were talks of like, maybe we could become independent. And as a result, he was super nationalist, uh, you know, in favor of the USSR, wanting it to be, you know, not communist anymore necessarily. He didn't like communism because, I mean, his father was arrested by uh, Stalin basically. And just because of some weird irregularities in supply distribution, which is weird. But anyway, basically he didn't like the, the idea of communism. He didn't like the, the leaders for the USSR, but he really liked the idea of a combined Russia. Because I mean, this is literally a man who was born inside the Russian uh, part of the Soviet Union. So uh, yeah, as a result, uh, his whole thing was that there should be a country that exists as the USSR. He doesn't want Moldova to be independent. And the Transnistrian independence movement was just a big movement to stay apart of all of that despite being separate. And his, his whole goal, he said like repeatedly, is like his life work is to make uh, Mold the Transnistria, that's the official name, the Moldovan Republic uh, as a recognized as a sovereign state and it's the goal of his entire life work. This man has one goal in his life. I mean, you can kind of see why like, uh, when you, when you look into like the figures behind the weird movements that don't make sense to you, if you actually look into it, it's like, well, it kind of makes sense that like, oh yeah, he was the son to someone and the, you know, like the, the Nazis took over some land and then when the Red Army took it back, he had to move to the Ukrainian SSR. His father finally moved up pretty high up, but then uh, Joseph Stalin uh, found some irregularities. So he got sentenced to 15 years for in a forced labor camp. And it's like, oh yeah. And then also they went to the Ural Mountains and it's like, uh, you, you can kind of see where like the backstories of these people make sense and why the people believe the things that they believe. This person, this man uh, who is dead, if I'm not mistaken, um, Oh, would you know he's not dead yet? That's nice. That's that's delightful. But um, the the thing is, is like these people are, um, you know, they they believe in a big movement, and this man just believes in the idea of a Transnistrian republic that needs to one day, you know, go something to do with Russia again, uh, but not the direction of Moldova. Whereas Moldova, on the other hand, uh, kind of just agrees that like, hey, that's our territory. All international law says that's our territory. We can't recognize you as independent or who knows what else is going to happen. And no one in the world recognizes you as a country. We are the one that the world deals with. Why won't you too? The amount of benefit that could be had for both countries by reuniting is a lot. And that's why it's interesting because the big, there has to be some economic move to keep the countries apart or one day just by nature of the fact that Econo you know, movements that are based around ethnicity or movements that are based around the idea of a spirit of a nation need to be revived on a regular basis, whereas economics is happening all the time. And that's why my prediction genuinely is here that someday there'll be some agreement that involves a high degree of, um, you know, a self-rule of running themselves. Uh, Transnistria will be reunited back into Moldova. All it takes is Moldova to make a good enough offer and Moldova themselves be doing a lot better than they are right now. Because Moldova is the poorest um, you know, country uh, that exists in Europe in terms of GDP per capita, in terms of average wages. It's a pretty, you know, like if, if Transnistria didn't exist, a lot of the wacky things that are true about Transnistria are kind of true when you look at it in Moldova. Like it's got a lot of things that make it kind of wacky and you know, maybe you could say concerning when compared uh, to, uh, you know, like the, the rest of Europe. But still, you can see the night and day difference between Transnistria and Moldova. And as that night and day difference, by the way, it went from night to day, isn't that a fun thing? But as that difference just gets stronger and stronger, bigger and bigger, you're going to see how uh, there is more and more incentive to reintegrate, I would imagine. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. This is right now in the 21st century, economics is the number one thing that decides everything and anything. Because, like I said, economics is every day, whereas. The idea of a, uh, you know, a big uh, nationalism, independence movement, as fun as it is to be a nationalist, nationalism is something that has to be reinvigorated on a regular basis, whereas economics happens every single day of your life, including when you watch this video and you gave me some fraction of a penny. So thank you very much for watching this little video. I just wanted to share the rabbit hole I dove into today. And uh, yeah, maybe you enjoy that too. If you don't, Wait, why is that? I wonder how people get around Transnistria. Because Transport Moldova makes sense, but like, what about 
Does does the rest of it even do quite well? Because I know Chin Sao has an airport. Is it? It's only one airport, even all of Moldova uh, international flights. And even then, it's only got twenty. And off those twenty, there's none with Ryanair, which are the biggest airline in Europe. There's one to Frankfurt. There's a few with Wizz Air, including to London Luton. So, should we fly to? Should we fly to Moldova? Would that be fun? Would that be an interesting video? Can I get into Moldova without a visa? I know I can get in Transnistria without a visa. See, these are these are the rabbit holes I'll just dive down. Like, wouldn't that be interesting? Should we do that for a video sometime, internet? Would that be fun? Is Moldova nice? Is Chinsao great? Is is it is it is it a safe place for me to go? There's more people in Chinsao than in all of uh, wait, let's Kishinau. Kishinau. There's more people in Kishinau than in all of uh the rest of uh you know Transnistria combined in all of the all of Transnistria combined, I should say. That's a fun little fact. But yeah, can we can we go there? Actually, wait, here's a fun fact, just in case you're curious. How do you know if you can go to a country? What you do is you type in um, Gov UK, uh, Moldova, and then there's like a big page of like entry requirements and like safety security briefings. Most visits to Moldova are trouble free. You should be alert to the possibilities of protests and demonstrations. Yeah, you know what? Don't join in a protest. I, I don't like protesting anyway. The only one I saw was in Slovenia, funnily enough, with loads of like pro EU people, even though they were in the EU at the time. It was kind of weird. Anyway, if you're in Moldova, keep up state developments and keep extra care. Avoid large crowds. Yep, 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 yep. If you visit Transnistria, you should be aware the region is outside the control of Moldovan authorities, and consular assistance the British Embassy can provide uh, can can provide may be seriously limited. So watch out for Transnistria, which gets its own page, by the way. Uh, fun fact, whole little section. But yeah, how do you know if you can go in? You just go entry requirements, and uh, visas are no longer required to enter Moldova if the stay is under 90 days. So I can go. Honestly, I, I didn't expect that I couldn't go, but in case you're ever curious, like that's how you do it. But if you go via Transnistria, um, you'll have some issues, but you'll receive a registration document and then you present it when you leave. That's a weird thing, actually. If you cross the board by rail, there's no immigration controls and your passport won't be stamped. See, I'm just saying that's a questionable way that whole thing works. Anyway, yeah, you can dive into this forever. You mean like, oh yeah, what's the deal with money? They use the, uh, it's traditionally cash driven, so let's make sure we bring in some Moldovan lay, I guess it's called. Let's see what it's called. Moldovan lay. Yep, it's, uh, you get 25 into the pound, so fun fact. Yeah, this, that's the day's video. Toycat, Toycat researches things and decides he wants to go to Moldova. Would you like to see me in Moldova? I'd like to see me in Moldova. But eight weeks before my trip, I've got to check out the latest country-specific help advice, so that's gonna be a whole thing weighing me down. But no, yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it, because um, I'll see you in another video, probably, unless I die before then, in which case, goodbye forever. Second channel, don't care.